Hi, everybody. Thanks again for joining, Art. And me and Manny Pacheco, the creator of Forgotten Hollywood and all things television. Well, maybe not television, but film and Hollywood. And uh, good to see you again, Manny. Well, it's good to see you guys. Happy New Year, if I haven't said that in the past. I realize we're we're into it now for a while, but, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's, sometimes we don't get a chance to say it when we should. So I would want to make it official. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. And of course, uh, Manny, you're including our audience in that as well, not just the three very close acquaintances that are on the screen. Right, right. Okay. okay. So anyway, uh, we just uh, uh, slogged through of the Golden Globes and uh, uh, the SAG Awards have been announced. Uh, uh, anything special going on with the SAG Awards in your opinion? Well, it was a very monumental week. I mean, we had on Sunday uh, uh, of the of the given week, we had the the um, the the, the, SAG, the, um, the Golden Globes uh, on CBS, and then and then a couple of days later, we had the SAG Award uh, nominations. Uh, as you know, I'm a member of the SAG AFTRA. I will shortly uh, put up my my choices of uh, the films that I think are are worthy of. Uh, of, of consideration in terms of the acting, because obviously the Screen Actors Guild is an acting body. Um, I will tell you that there are two films I have not seen yet of all of the nominations, and that is The Color Purple, uh, which I, I intend to see uh, and rectify that within the week. And then, of course, on Netflix, there is Nyad with uh, Jodie Foster and Annette Benning that I haven't had a chance to see, but my sister saw it and so thought it was absolutely terrific. But uh, there was uh, some very interesting choices in light of what happened at the Golden Globes that uh, kind of made the SAG Awards way more interesting. And that is to say, first of all, after the Golden Globes, it was very clear that Oppenheimer is a the absolute favorite in terms of the awards moving on. So it was no... Um, it was no surprise when they kind of dominated the SAG Awards along with Barbie with uh, four nominations. So um, there were some interesting snubs, though. Um, let's look at the motion picture cast. The way the SAG Awards work, they don't have a best picture. They nominate an entire cast uh, in, in, a, in a film. And then uh, they, they pick those five uh, cast uh, dominated films. And this year they picked Oppenheimer, The Killers of the Flower Moon, uh, the Color Purple, American Fiction, and Barbie. But there were three very notable films that were snubbed. One uh, with uh, that was on Netflix with Bradley uh, Cooper, and that was Maestro. Uh, the great uh, comedy with Paul Giamatti, The Holdovers, the Alexander uh, Payne-directed film. And uh, the one that's getting a lot of buzz right now, but didn't get the overall cast nomination, which was Poor Things with Emma Stone. Hmm. You know, it's kind of kind of interesting that uh, I also uh, noticed that. Um, correct me if I'm uh, wrong. That SAG has a much tighter group of pictures and uh, to deal with than it looks like. Uh, the Golden Globes took everything, including uh, stuff that probably should have even been there at all. Uh, yeah, not to mention, know, uh, I'm just talking about the movie side. Forget about the TV side. Yeah, like, yeah, so they have, no, I, but, yeah. I, know, I know exactly what you're saying. No, you're right. I mean, it, it seems to me, I always shake my head when I see the nominations of the Golden Globes and I go, wow. Well, I realize that's a comedy, but really, ah, I didn't, yeah. Right. But, it, but you're right. It's a tighter group. Only 11 films are involved in the SAG Award nominations. I mean, there were there were films that were completely snubbed out of every category. The uh, the movie I didn't care for, but got no love from SAG as well was May December, which was with um, with Julianne Moore and, uh, and Natalie Portman. That got snubbed completely. As mm -hmm. did the foreign films, Anatomy of a Fall and The Zone of Interest. They all got snubbed. But that's typical. The uh, the SAG is notorious for for snubbing foreign films for some reason, and I don't know why, but that just happens a lot. So, yeah, I mean, they were also not uh, doing well with the nominations, uh, but but in the cast category, it, it's just amazing to me. The Holdovers and uh, Maestro and, and uh, Poor Things just mm -hmm. got completely looked over. But they did get two nominations each 
in various other categories. You were going to ask me a question, John. I didn't want to snub you. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I was just going to say, what does, of course, the nomin we haven't had the SAG Awards yet, so we don't know no. who's won. No. But what does the SAG Awards, what's the correlation to the Academy Awards? Do they usually, um, they usually relate very closely? In some cases, they do. Not, not necessarily in the cast awards, but they do in the acting awards. That's a great question, John, because I can answer it with this. The actors comprise of the largest body of voting members of the Academy. Ah. So SAG is a good precursor of the acting awards, not necessarily best picture, best director, best cinematographer, but for the acting awards, it's a great precursor. Sure. And, and sure. let's get to those acting awards and you'll understand by not making it, that means that they may not do well when the nominations for the Academy comes out. So right. let's look at the male actor leads. Well, Bradley Cooper was expected. He is one of the favorites, although less a favorite after the Golden Globes gave the, uh, their award to Killian Murphy and in the comedy category, uh, Paul Giamatti. But Bradley Cooper is still in the mix for Maestro. Coleman yeah. Domingo, a personal favorite of mine in the Netflix movie uh, Rustin, he did very well, which I, I thought was very appropriate. Paul Giamatti, of course, for Holdovers. Killian Murphy for Oppenheimer. And Jeffrey Wright snuck in there with American Fiction. I didn't particularly care for American Fiction, but he did do a great job in his performance. Um, I didn't like the writing of it. That was, my, um, that was my problem. But this is an acting situation. So the one who got snubbed, you're saying, wow, that sounds like a pretty solid group. Who got snubbed? Leonardo DiCaprio. For oh. Killers of the Flower Moon. Yes. Snubbed. Hmm. That's interesting. Now, they're saying it's because his character was so dastardly that people wouldn't have liked it. Well, that's good to a point until you look at the supporting actors. But we'll get to that in a second. Yeah. The uh, female actors seem to, they, they seem to work to form. The, the predictions were right on. Uh, Annette Benning for Nyad. And I, like I said, I haven't seen Nyad yet. Uh, Lily Gl Gladstone, the clear favorite for Killers of the Flower Moon, nominated. Yeah. Carrie Mulligan, absolutely terrific uh, in Maestro. Uh, Margot Robbie, who did a very nice job with Barbie. I mean, she was Barbie. I mean, essentially, yeah. oh, she yeah. really carries the film. As did Emma Stone in Poor Things. At this point, I haven't made a choice in my... I, I, I clearly not made a choice in this category because there were so many strong... Uh, choices. And I, I suspect when I see Annette Benning, she's going to be added to that list. This is clearly the right five. Who got snubbed? Uh, S Sandra Hewlier from Anatomy of a Fall. But I already mentioned that these um, these foreign films get snubbed. So that's yeah. not much of a surprise. Yeah. Now, in the male actor in the supporting categories. Now, this is where, wow, this was just a, an upheaval. Several folks got snubbed. Sterling K. Brown got nominated for American Fiction, and I will tell you, he's the best thing about American Fiction. He is truly the comic relief, and he's very, very good. He shines. He's he's laugh out loud funny. I mean, he really yeah. carries the film in, from the characters, the supporting point of view. Uh, William Willem Dafoe, Willem Dafoe for Poor Things. He plays, I think, the better of the two roles between him and Mark Ruffalo. And so I was happy to see that he got the the nod. Uh, Robert De Niro, Killers of the Flower Moon, a despicable character. So it doesn't jive with me that, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio didn't get picked when when Robert De Niro is clearly just as despicable. Yes. Robert Downey Jr. for Oppenheimer, right now the favorite. And, of course, the other favorite, Ryan Gosling for Barbie. Who yes. got snubbed? Uh, Charles Melton, who has been winning lots of awards for May, December. I didn't care for the film. And I didn't care for the film because of him. So oh. it's still love lost for me. Yeah. But he has been, you know, the critics like him. So it's surprising he didn't get picked. And Mark Ruffalo has been clearly the favorite of the two between him and Willem Dafoe. So it's a shock. As, sho as shocking as Leo, this is a shock that Mark Ruffalo got uh, snubbed in Poor Things. So. Yeah. The winner in that group, as far as, you know, the nominations are concerned, was Sterling K. Brown. He really got in and, and at the expense of the other two. And then finally, the female actors in a supporting role. This is pretty, pretty clear with one 
um, surprise, one surprise ad, as opposed to a snub, somebody surprisingly got in. Uh, we expected Emily Blunt and Oppenheimer and Danielle Brooks in the color purple and Divine Joy Randolph in the holdovers and even Jodie Foster in Nyad. The surprise was Penelope Cruz in Ferrari. Oh, and, she, know, was she was good. good. She's always good. I mean, I'm yeah. a big, big fan of Penelope Cruz. And, and she was very good, but nobody was talking about Ferrari at all. So Interesting. who gets snubbed? Rosamund Pike for her performance in uh, Saltburn. Also yeah. snubbed uh, was probably Vanessa Kirby in Napoleon. I mean, there were some clear snubs, but it's hard to argue with her performance. Penelope Cruz is explosive, fiery yeah. actress, and she, you know, she refuses to get herself, let herself be ignored. So good for her. I mean, that was a, that was a good choice. Yeah. There yeah. you go. I'm pretty clear, except that I haven't seen Color Purple and Nyad before I make my choices. I want to see all of the films, but I'm pretty clear as to who I think I'm going to pick. For four of the categories, the best actress categories, wow, I am mm. I am really lost because I, there are at least four to five perfect performances. Yeah. And, yeah. and the, 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 it really shines in the best actress category this well, year. Well, I have to tell you, uh, Manny, uh, I know that you always make up your own mind, but my wife and I saw an I had, uh, about three, oh, three okay. or four weeks ago. <laughs> and that, that thing was amazing. Well, uh, that obviously- And Jodie big... For Foster. Helped mm -hmm. her amazing role even shine more. So they they really they were really a great combination on the screen. I'll be interested in, in hearing your opinions after that. But you're going to give us your your uh, selections. Uh, well, I, I you know my, do you know my, you know you publish them, right? No, I won't publish them until I finish watching the films. But if I had okay. to choose today, it's pretty easy in a couple of them because I've seen all the movies. I think in in the motion picture cast i haven't seen the color purple but i'm leaning towards oppenheimer obviously i i love i i've mentioned before i love the movie and as much as i love killers of the flower moon which is a very close second very close it would be very easy for me to pick killers of the flower moon and for example last year i would have picked that over anything that that came out last year so it's 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 a hard choice, but I think I'm leaning towards Oppenheimer. As far as the actors in the leading role, I'm also leaning towards Killian Murphy in Oppenheimer. As much as I loved Bradley Cooper and especially Paul Giamatti, I just abs I, I love the fact that Paul Giamatti took his Golden Globe after the ceremony and celebrated at In-N-Out Burger. I think that that's great, and I love the pictures of him eating his double double with the with the Golden Globe right on the table. What is not to love about Paul Giamatti? I mean, he's he's <laughs> he's the best. Yeah. But that said, I think I'm going to go with Killian Murphy. And as far as the uh, best actor in a supporting role, because I've seen all the films as, again, clearly for me it was Rob Robert Downey Jr. Mm. in Oppenheimer. So you're hearing a, you're hearing a trend with me. I loved Oppenheimer. Uh, in three of the choices, I'm going to pick Oppenheimer. I will not pick Emily Blunt for Oppenheimer at this point. I'm 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 leaning towards. Divine Joy Randolph for The Holdover. She has won just about every single award that's been presented. But I haven't seen Jodie Foster. I haven't seen Danielle Brooks, and they deserve my attention. So Absolutely. I will see them. Yeah. Absolutely. So, But of the three that I've seen, Divine Joy Foster, and the only one I haven't decided on at all is the, uh, the female actor. I, I'm telling you, I, it's very easy for me to vote for Lily Gladstone, the favorite, mm -hmm. but... You know, how do you argue against Emma Stone, who absolutely was magnificent in Poor Things, or yeah. Carrie Mulligan, who was absolutely magnificent in Maestro, and yeah. Margot Robbie, who really did a great job in Barbie. I mean, I it is really hard. And and if what you're saying is true, Art, Margot, I mean, we're talking Annette Benning being mm. absolutely fabulous in Nyad. I, I have not made a choice, and I can be honest yeah. about that. That one that one is a toss-up at this point. Let me ask you a question. That you also have an ensemble, do they not, as opposed to well, Best Picture? Right. So right. Uh, you're, you're saying Oppenheimer is your choice? Over, very close between Oppenheimer and Killers of the Flower Moon. But yes, right now I'm, I'm leaning towards so Oppenheimer. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to go out on a limb on this one. Normally, I mean, you just know so much more about this stuff than I do. So I normally nod, nod to you. Uh, I think that probably uh, uh, the SAG Award 
if not the second one, then Oscar, when they get the best picture, it's going to be Barbie. Because that was a risk. That was Which a one? total Barbie. That was oh, a total, Bar total risk. And look what it did at the box office. Now, you know, Art, the, the, the problem with Barbie is political, I think. It's just not getting the love. I thought it was a magnificent achievement yeah. to, to bring to life Barbie. Mm. In in every respect, and I thought Margot Robbie was fabulous. Yeah, but you don't think, but nobody, you don't think it's got the love. It got it. got it. Got a billion, a billion loves, at least right worldwide. Yeah, so but, far. Yes, but so did, but so did Star Wars, and it, it's not the best picture. Mm. I mean, okay. so did you know? And so did a lot of films that have made a lot of money, but that doesn't translate necessarily right. into winning awards. Just ask Steven Spielberg with his lone Oscar for. Uh, for for Schindler's List, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know he's made he's made he's made billions and billions and billions of dollars in movies that were extremely po popular, from Jaws to uh, to uh, uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark to right. Jurassic Park. That doesn't translate necessarily well, into as I sort of implied. Oscar. Just the two of you letting me in the same room with you is <laughs> in a, is my award. But so. you know that said, if you want to talk about the Oscars for a moment. I will say yes, production design, costumes. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot to give Barbie love to. I mean, honestly, I mean, th there are categories, uh, the 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 song categories. I mean, it, it's Billy's Billy Eilish's to lose. Yeah. I'm mean, she's not going to lose. So I mean, Barbie is going to walk away with Oscars. There's no question. But I don't think they're walking away with the best picture Oscar, I'll tell you that. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so uh uh, Manny, thank you for your insights. Um, uh, you're rarely you've you've never been shut out, and your 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 reasoning is solid. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the SAG Awards. Uh, the I quite frankly I nodded off during the Os the uh, Golden Globes, uh, and let's see who's hosting who's hosting uh, uh, the uh, Oscars this year. Have they announced? I, I I, I believe it's uh, Jimmy Kimmel, but but you know I, you, the funny mm. you mentioned that SAG Awards in their in their twenty five years has never had a host, mm. never had a host, and they've been it just hasn't, hasn't hurt been them just a fine. bit. No, it hasn't hurt them a bit. Yep. They've never had a host, and as much as you're looking forward to seeing these shows, this is the year you should be looking forward to seeing the movies. And, and you saw Nyad, so you, I can tell you right now that uh, the movies that are out this year. Nyad probably belongs in a very talented group of movies. So very few that I've disliked. Only one, but I'm not going to mention the one. Why, why jump on people? So I'm not right. going to do that. But I will tell you that the, the movies this year are superiorly better than last year. So Yeah. And really? by the way, since we're talking about acting today, I think the acting uh, this year uniformly across the board in all these movies is much better. Mm -hmm. um, I loved, in particular, um, uh, De Niro in Killers of the Moon thought yeah. he did a non-De Niro thing. You Wonder know? and I wonderfully just, done. Yeah, I, I, I just I, loved him. Also loved for, DiCaprio by by the way. But yeah, yeah. No, Killers of the Flower Moon is an exceptional movie, and you know when all is said and done, it may be with all the great movies he's done. By the way, and he's done a number of great movies. This might be Scor Scorsese's masterpiece. I mean, it really might be. Could be, yeah. Yeah. Could be. And one last note, Penelope Cruz. <laughs> I thought she was magnificent. And, and she, wasn't, she wasn't the typical Penelope Cruz. No, mm -hmm. no. She was, she Which, was and for me, For me, that's acting. You know, actors get into a, a character. They do the same thing. A producer hires them. A director directs them. And they always want the same. They want your last successful performance. Just yes. do that again for us and we'll have a hit. <laughs> No, the actors have to fight that. And I thought De Niro and Cruz definitely did. Well, did some original work. And your input is very valuable. I mean, those are good, insightful comments. I mean, for a director, <laughs> right? <laughs> hey, yeah, even you know, directors you might director, get it right. You have opinions, and that's a, that's, that was very savvy to me. I mean, I don't think, I can't argue with what you just said, John, at By all. By the way, another film that uh, I don't hear too much about, Air. I thought that was a great film. Yeah, that was one of those films that I scratched my head at the it Golden Globe. It came out World. too early in the I year, I think. Yeah. yeah. Didn't, I, it, I loved it. Yeah. Mm. All right, I'm with you.
Yeah. Yeah. It was, I mean, it was I, terrific. I mean, it's an enjoyable popcorn film that probably didn't deserve any kind of Oscars or or any kind of accolades. I mean, but I That's mean, right. it's an enjoyable film. Yeah, we, we forget that the awards, when it comes down to a ra- award time, it's not about the success of the film. It's about the artistry. Thank you. <laughs> the artistry. It's not, about, it's not about the amount of money they spent on for your consideration. Yeah. Well, let me just put it one other way. Nobody looked sadder after six years of preparation than Bradley Cooper did when he lost for Maestro. The look on his face when they gave the award to Killian yeah. Murphy, he's like, Six years down the drain, and he didn't yeah. just and he didn't just lose by a nose. Oh, I think, oh. Yeah, I think he was. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, really? Oh, yeah. art. That okay. We're done. That's it. That's an anti-Semitic <laughs> trope. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All See right, you guys. Take care. Take care, guys. For more on celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage. Follow us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube. And tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.